Dog Day Afternoon is an American biographical crime drama film of 1975. The plot of the film follows an inexperienced criminal, Sonny Wardzik, who leads a bank robbery at a bank in Brooklyn. However, his robbery does not go as planned, forcing him to develop a hostage situation. Although Sonny and his accomplice, Salvatore Naturil, try to their best to keep things under control, mayhem follows after the media and FBI arrive, making things difficult for the robbers. The film starts with a prologue explaining that the events of this film are based on a true story that happened in Brooklyn, New York on August 22, 1972. A group of three noob criminals decided to commit a robbery in a bank in Brooklyn. Among them, Stevie, the teenage accomplice, takes a peek inside the bank and informs his group who's sitting in the car about the situation of the bank, giving them a green signal to enter. The second member of the trio, a troubled middle-aged man, Salvatore Naturil, aka Sal, enters the bank followed by the leader, Sonny Wardzik, who has a long gift box with him. At last, Stevie also enters the bank before it closes. Upon entering, Sal approaches the bank manager, opens his briefcase, and pulls out his gun. The manager, named Mulvaney, is startled and does not move. Meanwhile, Stevie tells Sonny that they should leave with something smaller as he's not getting good vibes. However, it's too late as Saul has already pulled out his gun. A moment later, Sonny abruptly opens the gift box and takes out his rifle to corner the bank staff. When he asks Stevie to gun down the security guard, Stevie loses his nerve and demands to leave the robbery. Having no other choice, Sonny kicks him out of the bank before taking his gun and car keys. The bank staff is stunned to see the anxious robbers since they're all over the place. Sonny quickly spray paints all the surveillance cameras and asks the staff to close the drapes. The bank manager offers to open the vault, but initially tries to trick Sonny by using the alarm spot key. However, Sonny quickly figures it out and warns the manager not to play smart with him. The bank manager hands the vault key to one of his employees, Miriam, and asks her to open the vault. Petrified, Miriam opens the vault and reveals that the vault has only $1,100 in cash because the robbers arrived after the daily cash pickup. Sonny loses his mind and exits the vault, asking the head teller of the bank to open the cash drawers. Since Sonny had previously worked in a bank, he knows all the bank procedures to keep the alarm from going off. He takes the bank's traveler's checks, burns the register in a trash can, and decides to leave. However, the smoke from the trash can can raise suspicion and a man starts peeking inside the bank. Having no other choice but to save their lives, the bank manager approaches the door and assures the man that everything is fine. Sonny then locks the remaining female staff into the vault, but just then the manager receives a call from Sonny, and it turns out that it is police detective sergeant Eugene Moretti, who has had the bank surrounded by the police. Chaos prevails outside the bank, and Sonny and Sal lose their wits. The bank staff starts berating the robbers for being reckless and carrying out an unplanned robbery. Just then the hostages' families start calling the bank to ensure their safety. When Sonny receives a call from one of the police officers, he bluffs by threatening him to kill the hostages one by one if the police decide to storm into the bank. Soon, a full-fledged team of convoys starts arriving outside of the bank. Sonny checks the back door of the bank and realizes that he's totally trapped and cannot escape. He suspects that maybe somebody tripped an alarm and informed Sal about it. Sal asks Sonny whether he was bluffing to the police or is actually thinking of executing the hostages. He makes it clear to Sonny that he's ready to kill if necessary. Sonny and Sal both start panicking and, and Sonny asks the hostages to cooperate. All of a sudden, the bank's security guard, Howard, starts having an asthma attack. Sonny asks the bank manager to help him block the back door to make sure the cops do not enter through it. At first, Sonny decides to use the bank manager as a shield to get out of the bank but soon he realizes that he will be taking a married woman with kids as his shield. According to him, the cops don't like it in the papers when they shoot a married woman. Soon, the FBI agent Sheldon arrives and is puzzled to see the situation outside the bank. The news of the bank robbery spreads like wildfire, and the media starts approaching Moretti to inquire about the bank situation. Moretti informs them that he's setting up communications and that the perpetrators are still inside the bank. Moretti once again calls Sonny and asks if he has an accomplice or not. Sonny bluffs that he and his accomplice are Vietnam veterans, so killing anyone won't be a big deal for them. Moretti tries to talk his way through him and inquire about his and his accomplice's names. After knowing the names, he manipulates Sonny into releasing the hostages so that he can develop trust. However, Sonny instantly refuses as he's aware that hostages are keeping him alive. Moretti asks him to release the women, but since they are the majority of the hostages, but Sonny lies to him and tells him that he only has women inside. After the call, Sonny decides to release Howard as a display of good faith. 
The head teller takes Howard out, but since no one on the outside was alerted about the release, they think Howard's the robber and point their guns at him. Confusion prevails everywhere between the 250 cops, media, and the hostage. Moretti quickly saves Howard from the cops and berates Sonny for keeping him uninformed about the release and for lying to him that only women hostages are inside. He starts manipulating Sonny to step outside by assuring him that he's unarmed. Sonny heads back inside to get a white flag and then, using the head teller as a shield, he steps outside the bank. Moretti keeps persuading him into getting his accomplice out as well and promises to take care of the kidnapping and armed robbery charges. Sonny realizes that Moretti is trying to con him and demands talking to someone who's in charge of the robbery. He then starts shouting, Attica, Attica, to invoke the recent Attica prison riot. The crowd begins cheering for Sonny, giving his ego the much needed boost. He starts demanding the cops lower their guns and Moretti follows his demand. Sonny's mother gets the news of the robbery and feels ashamed of her son's awful acts. Meanwhile, Sonny decides to get back inside the bank. Moretti tries to keep the head teller with him, but she refuses to leave her colleagues alone inside. Inside the bank, Sonny gets a call from one of the live interviews from the media. The interviewer inquires him about the motive behind the robbery. Sonny starts acting up and blames the government for the lack of jobs and the negligible number of salaries they pay. The news reporter does not appreciate Sonny's foul language and cuts the transmission. Tensions start rising between Sal and Sonny when Sal reminds him that they promised each other to get away clean or kill themselves. Puzzled, Sonny comes up with an idea and relays it to Sal to demand a chopper from the police and fly out of the country. Although Sal does not show much excitement about the idea, Sonny calls Moretti outside to talk and allows the hostages to call their loved ones and tell them that they're going on a trip. As he walks outside, the crowd starts cheering for him. However, a member of one of the hostages' families charges Sonny and is immediately arrested. Moretti apologizes to Sonny on his behalf and asks him about his offer. Sonny demands a helicopter and a jet with all the facilities so he can fly abroad and also for his wife to be brought to the bank. He agrees to release one hostage in exchange for one demand. After Sonny gives Moretti his wife's address, the police reach out to her. However, Sonny's panicked wife Angie refuses to come to the bank. In the meantime, when Sonny goes into the bank's basement to check the air conditioning, he realizes that the police are trying to break in. He starts panicking and shoots at the basement's window, creating a frightening situation both inside and outside. Out of fright, one of the hostages falls unconscious. Moretti starts calling Sonny outside with a bullhorn and the two start quarreling for not holding each other's side of the bargain. Moretti informs Sonny that he's got his demands fulfilled and instead of a helicopter, he has a bus that can drive them to the airport. Sonny agrees to it and also demands pizzas, soft drinks, and aspirin to be brought for the hostages. When the food arrives, he goes outside and offers to pay for it. Just then, the crowd starts cheering and Sonny decides to throw dollar bills at them, creating a stampede outside the bank. Finally, the hostages are fed. Eventually, they start growing closer to Sal and Sonny. Soon, Sonny's partner, Leon Shermer, a 26-year-old admitted homosexual, is brought up. However, upon seeing Sonny, Leon loses his wits and falls unconscious. He's taken to a barber shop where Moretti tries to communicate with him. Leon reveals that Sonny has children with his estranged wife, Angie. Moreover, he adds that he's married to Sonny and that the robbery that Sonny initiated was planned to pay for Leon's sex change surgery, which cost $2,500. Since Leon is all drugged up, he refuses to talk to Sonny, despite Moretti's insistence. Soon, the news of homosexual marriage spreads out to the media, and the hostages inside the bank are astonished to hear it. As night sets in, the bank's lights are shut off, and the robbers start getting petrified. Sonny is summoned outside by FBI agent Sheldon, who now takes command of the scene. Sonny asks him to turn on the lights and air conditioning, but Sheldon refuses to give him any more favors and instead demands Sonny to let him in so he can ensure that all the hostages are fine. Sonny agrees and after searching Sheldon for any weapons, he lets him in. Upon seeing Sheldon, the hostages berate him for not meeting the robbers' demands, so Sheldon assures them that he's working on it. The troubled Sal demands Sheldon to tell the media to stop calling him a homosexual on TV. Sonny escorts Sheldon out of the bank and before leaving, Sheldon manipulates Sonny to sell out Sal. Sonny turns down his offer and walks back in only to find the bank manager going into diabetic shock. Sheldon lets a doctor inside and also tells Sonny that Leon is ready to talk to him on the phone. Through Leon and Sonny's conversation, it's revealed that Leon has been hospitalized in a hospital after he attempted to commit suicide. 
He starts berating Sonny for causing violence and putting the lives of innocents at stake. Sonny is pissed as he committed the robbery for Leon's operation. However, P asked Leon to join him and Sal in the escape, but Leon turns down his offer. Upon Leon's request, Sonny tells the police, who have been eavesdropping on his entire conversation, that Leon had nothing to do with the robbery. Heartbroken, Sonny calls Angela, who is still unable to believe that Sonny can do something so fierce. She apologizes to Sonny for not helping him despite noticing from a few days that he was disturbed. When Angie talks about love, Sonny complains to her for not showing up for him at the bank. Angie elucidates that she was scared, so Sonny hangs up the phone on her. The doctor suggests taking the bank manager out as a precautionary measure, so Sonny agrees to let Mulvaney leave. However, Mulvaney refuses to leave his employees alone. Sheldon then calls Sonny out of the bank to talk to his mother. Upon seeing her child, Sonny's mother starts panicking and blames Angie for not treating her son right. Despite his mother's persuasion to give up, Sonny does not relent and asks her to leave. When Sheldon indicates to Sonny that the bus is arriving soon, he asks the head teller to write out his will in which he leaves money from his life insurance for Angie and for Leon to have the surgery. Finally, the bus arrives and Sonny steps outside to search it for hidden weapons. Despite Sheldon's reluctance, Sonny demands that Agent Murphy drive him, Sal, and the remaining hostages to the airport. He then quickly gathers the hostages and loads them up on the bus. While Sonny sits in the front besides Murphy, Sal sits behind keeping his gun pointed at Murphy. Before leaving, Murphy asks Sal to point his gun at the roof so Sal does not accidentally shoot him. The bus is escorted by many cop cars protecting it from the public's attack. Finally, they arrive at the airport. While Sonny is ecstatic to see the plane arrive, the hostages start shedding tears. Sheldon arrives and asks Sonny to fulfill his side of the bargain, so Sal releases two hostages, one of whom gives her prayer beads as a good luck gesture for his first plane trip. Just when everyone is about to exit the bus, Murphy once again reminds Sal to keep his gun pointed to the roof. Sal does, and in a matter of seconds, Sheldon seizes Sonny's weapon, giving enough time for Murphy to pull his hidden gun and shoot Sal in the head. Sonny is devastated to see his efforts go in vain and begs Murphy not to shoot him. Meanwhile, the hostages run out of the bus and Sonny is arrested by Murphy. The film ends with Sonny seeing the hostages reuniting with their families and Sal's body being taken to an ambulance on a stretcher. The epilogue reveals that Sonny served 12 years in federal prison, that Angie lived with her children on welfare, and that Leon converted into a woman. This movie has a rating of 8.0 on IMDb. The budget of this movie was around $4 million, and at the box office it earned $50 million. I hope you all liked this video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.